Hi, I'm Gabrielle Beans. I'm the manager of Complexity Explorer, hosted by the Santa Fe Institute. And we're here today with Dr. Barbara Oakley, um, who's been with us all week here in Santa Fe and has been giving us all sorts of tips and secrets about MOOC making and learning in general. Complex systems can appear at first really daunting to new learners, uh, and it's true that to really dive deeply into an understanding of complex system science and then to do research in it, you need a great foundation in math and physics. And we have maybe many students that are interested in understanding a bit more about complex systems, but might think that that, that math and the physics sides of things might be really difficult for them. And do you have any words of advice for someone that maybe doesn't have a quantitative mind and that now wants to switch to thinking more quantitatively, bringing more math into their lives, as you did? Well, I, it, it is very doable. And what I really like about uh, the Santa Fe Institute's courses is that the beginning courses, the introductory courses, take you gently upwards so that if you just work a little bit day by day, it, it's very doable. It's you're, when you're learning in math and science, you're creating new neural patterns in exactly the same way that you change your brain and create mental patterns when you're learning how to perform a new dance step or how to say some phrases in a foreign language or pick up some chords on the guitar. It's, you're doing exactly the same thing. So a big key is a little bit of daily practice. You don't want to wait until the weekend and then cram everything and watch an entire week's worth of material on that one day. You want to do a little bit each day practicing along. It's, it is very much like you're just learning to play a musical instrument or you're learning a sport. You want to be able to practice a little bit with that sport each day and that's what's going to help you develop those mental patterns that are going to give you the expertise that you want to have. It's all very doable, tiny bits at a time each day. That's the key. So just start and take little baby steps each day. Look up, there's something called the Pomodoro Technique. So if you find yourself procrastinating a little bit, then just set a timer for 25 minutes. Turn off anything that could bother you. And like, no little ringy dingies on your cell phone uh -huh. or that kind of thing. <laughs> and, then, and then all you need to do is focus as intently as you can. Nobody's perfect. For 25 minutes. And when you're done, give yourself a nice little reward. Listen to a song you like move around a little bit, uh, you know, chat on the chat room. And uh, just doing these kinds of things can help you get a nice, slow, great start to learning. I've actually, when I first took your MOOC, I started doing this a little bit. So when I have a really complicated task and I need to break it down, it, I sometimes get like what I call brain overload and I feel like the fumes are coming out. And um, I get to bring my dog to work, who's, it's, which is wonderful. Her dog is so cute. <laughs> She's adorable. But uh, so what I tend to do then is when I get to that overload point is I take her for a short walk around the institute and come back. And sometimes my ideas have just had a chance to coalesce, like to converge on, on a new train of thought. And I found that super helpful. Actually. It really is. It really is. A little bit of exercise when you're taking mm -hmm. that break is actually like the perfect it helps your brain to consolidate and, and kind of rearrange and make sense of what you're trying to learn. It works beautifully. Okay, let's change uh, gears a little bit and talk about your latest project. Uh, I mentioned that you have a new MOOC and book out now called MindShift, and I haven't had a chance to take it yet, but I'm absolutely going to. Um, from what I understand, it's a little bit more on how to improve your career, maybe with online learning, um, than it is learning itself. So could you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. MindShift is about how you can make deep-seated changes in your life simply through learning. And part of the great things that are going on right now is that we've got 
great new ways to learn. You don't have to just give everything up and stop and go to a university. You can find things online. And, but it also helps you, the course is meant to help you think about your career in a strategic way. What's the big picture? What's really gonna happen in your career? How can you sort of try to develop some skills that might enhance the skill set you already have so you can be more resilient when things are changing, which they're inevitably going to happen. Mm -hmm. How do you develop a second skill? How do you even think about uh, developing a uh, sort of a supplemental or a side expertise? Should it be something in involving something you're passionate about or should it simply be work related that will help you there? The MOOC is meant to help you think about all of these kinds of things and also to discuss these kinds of matters with people all around the world who are grappling with these same kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun to compare notes with someone, if you're from the U.S., with someone from Singapore who's having these same kinds of, uh, they're struggling with some of the same issues. And it can really help you think and prepare in your career more strategically so that you're better off in the long run when it comes to the competition. So on our platform, we focus on an understanding of complex systems. And in regards specifically to that field, what kind of advantage do you think a student would have um, learning complex systems to further their own careers? Well, as an engineer myself, I know that complex systems are inherent in almost everything that's around us. They're really important. They're important for engineers. They're important for data analytics, anyone working in that area. In fact, you probably know what kinds of areas that it really could be helpful, and I know it's a big list. Well, uh, it's just everywhere, like you said. Um, I mean, from understanding traffic flows to trying to create policy, new policy. Like, for example, uh, what you might make what seems like a simple decision and might help the whole world or your whole country or, or district or something like that. But if you haven't considered the um, interactions between the people in, in your um, district, say, you might be missing like an actual result from a policy change. And so having an understanding of how these small, seemingly unimportant interactions at that individual level can create these larger unpredictable patterns or potentially unpredictable, um, that really changes your whole approach to something. And so like it can be in policy, it can be in physics, biology, and understanding of how um, swarms of insects appear and devastate crops you know these are these are all important questions uh city planning well of course we're, we're in love with complex systems so i could go on and on Let's, i'm not going to bore you all well I, I i think it's pretty clear that complex systems are everywhere and they're even in our own relationships so it, it behooves you to know a little bit about this enormously important field Okay, well, I have one more question for you, which is going into a little bit more of the interesting backstory of your life, um, and but it's still related to your courses. So as I understand it, your experience from going from being a Russian translator to like an engineer heavily influenced your decision to then get into these like learning how to learn and, and the mind shift courses that you've produced, as well as a whole bunch of really good books that you should check out. Uh, could you tell us <laughs> <laughs> what she said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about that ex personal experience for you and maybe share a funny anecdote or two? Oh, I have some good ones. But I think one thing that people often forget is that when you shift careers from one area to another, you always feel like, oh, should I do this? It's like scary. I'm so far behind mm -hmm. all the other people. You know, they've been working on this for years. Here I am a brand newbie. And what you tend to forget is that you bring a lot of value from your past into your new career. 
just as I brought a lot of value from learning Russian. I mean, who would have thought? Mm. It, it really helped me when I was learning engineering. And let's say you're a, 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 a person who's in sports and you didn't quite make it in golf, right? You wanted to be a pro, but couldn't quite make it. So you go into marketing and you're like, man, everybody else is really far ahead of me. They mm -hmm. know a lot more about marketing. Well, guess what? You've got this background in sports that can super help your what you're doing in your new career in marketing. And it's like that so very often. What one interesting thing is that there's a, uh, Thomas Kuhn was a, uh, a very important historian and philosopher of science. And what he found was that people who were most creative and most innovative in making, well, paradigm shifts, big breakthroughs, were either really young people who hadn't yet been indoctrinated into the mm -hmm. discipline or people who had changed careers. And so it's these career changers who can look with a fresh perspective. They ask these sort of beginner's mind kind of questions. You know, it's like, who could be dumb enough to ask mm -hmm. this kind of question? And often it's a really important and very good question. So if you are feeling really uncomfortable, kind of a little bit like an imposter, and you, you're like, gee, I don't know if I should be here, whether I can actually be successful at this, congratulations, you are well set up to be successful because it's that very feeling of discomfort, that imposter feeling that can help you listen with a beginner's mind and help you be successful. So I, I think the best thing is go ahead, give it a try. The nice thing is that you've got these great online courses so you can go at it a little bit at a time and feel comfortable with it, and that's a great way to go. That's great, but you scurried away from my question about anecdotes. Oh, I did. <laughs> well, some of them were. Let's see. So, yeah, okay. Just one. Just one? A safe one. It's fine. Okay. So when I was working on the Soviet trolls, uh -huh. we had... KGB agent who would sit and watch me each day. He came on the ship and he spent a whole week there. Nobody would talk to me because there's like this KGB agent watching me and it was really just, you know, kind of very fearful for the other people on the ship because if they talked to me, it's bad news, right? So I started getting really bored and kind of like nobody talked to me. I was lonely and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it turned out that I was working on the ship and the, I had this bag, last time I'd gone into port, I'd got this big bag of squirt guns, like really big, right? A bag, you know, it was like 20 squirt guns. And the Soviets had never seen squirt guns before. So I don't know why I did this, but I just did. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so this KGB agent would keep watching me, watching me. And he, um, so, you know, I was like, what do we do? So I go down and I fill all the squirt guns with water. I had them, I took the bag up, and I put one squirt gun kind of behind my, you know, uh, kind of in a little baggie, and I, I put it right in my pants there. So I went upstairs, and I started talking on the radio, and then, you know, the KGB agent was watching, and he goes, uh, uh, yeah, he's just watching away, and I just took my squirt gun out, and I shot him <laughs> right between the eyes. <laughs> you would have thought this guy had just died and gone to heaven. He's like, what is that? And he grabs a squirt gun, he squirts me. I take a squirt gun out, I squirt him back. Then the other guys on the bridge are like, they all want squirt guns. So we all start squirting each other. Uh -huh. And so then the guys from the bridge come up. Well, we run out, or from the deck crew, and they we run out of squirt guns. And so, <laughs> so they get water buckets, and they're like throwing water buckets, right? And so then there's not enough water buckets, and so they get the fire hoses. It turns oh into this, this gigantic water fight all over the ship. And I woke up the next morning and the KGB agent was gone. <laughs> so my, well, my problem my, solved. The moral of the story is if you want to get rid of KGB agents, try a squirt gun. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we'll all get a chance to use that piece of advice. So I just wanted 
wrap up by saying thank you so much for coming out to the Santa Fe Institute and spending time with us this week. We've really gained so many invaluable lessons from just chatting with you and also you're a really fantastic, interesting person, I think. I'll pay her later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So to our students, if you haven't actually taken any of Barbara Oakley's wonderful MOOCs, her two MOOCs, or read any of her books, we absolutely recommend that you check them out. Um, we'll put up some links for you so you know where to find them. And once you've gone off and learned how to learn and figured out how to strategically learn to enhance your career, come back to Complexity Explorer and take our courses yes. more strategically. <laughs>